Good morning and a happy Sabbath. We welcome you yet another Sabbath to our lesson discussion. We hope you had a blessed week. Last week we looked at beware of covetousness. And like we said, that, that was a heavy lesson. It was a lesson that reminded us of this inordinate desire to have wealth and positions that does not belong to you. And we saw just what po covetousness can do. People died because of desiring that which does not belong to you. So this morning, we're going to discuss giving back. And uh, I, know, I know before I read this lesson, I thought what you're thinking, uh, which is probably giving back to the community. But let's see what the Lord is teaching us this morning from this lesson of giving back. So my name is Masi Odor. I'll be your moderator this morning. And with me, I'm joined by my panel of gentlemen. And I'll ask them to introduce themselves to you as we go into our lesson discussion. So I'll start with Elder Jared. Happy Sabbath. I'm glad that we are here again to worship God and to learn from him. I'm glad to be here. <clears throat> and my name is Jared Manyara. I'm one of the panelists today and I'm excited that I'm going to learn on giving back. Something that is very challenging for many of us. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Welcome, Elta. Ralph. Yeah, my name is Onsongo, Raphael. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this Sabbath day, even as we uh, go delve into a deep discussion as to what the Lord uh, expects of us, even as we are winding down our years and our time here on earth. Thank Amen. you. Happy Sabbath and uh, good morning. My name is Ongala Morris, and I'm glad to be a panelist today. I'm looking forward to this discussion. Karibu. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Today, today is a very interesting lesson. And like I said, when I started reading this lesson, I was very surprised at what um, the Lord had in store for us. We're going to look at our memory text for this morning. And the Bible says in Revelation 14, verse 13, it's a, it's a, it's a verse that we love to quote, um, mainly in...
every time I have I've, I've read this memory verse, it's it's one that gives me hope. Anytime you have lost a relative and a loved one, just that hope of knowing that there is a hope for tomorrow. But even just that blessedness of seeing that they are resting from their labors. Yet there's something called that their works are following them. I wonder what this, what really, what are these works and, and what are these works that are following them? But before we even get into this, I, I want to, I want my, my panelists this morning, we have had, we are in lesson 10. That's how far we have come. And we were just discussing before we started, uh, we, we started this morning, just how powerful this lesson has been. And I probably want to give each one of you a chance to just tell me what it's been an amazing lesson and the key lesson you probably have picked over the weeks as we have gone. And I don't know, let me start with you, Maurice. Just something that this lesson has been to you even before we go into understanding what is giving back. Um, thank you so much, Sister Mercy. We started with uh, being part of God's family and God's covenant with us and we talked about the tithing contract, offering, offerings for Jesus, dealing with debt, laying up treasures in heaven, and to the list of these, planning for success. But the one that has struck me the most is the one that we did last, last week, mm-hmm. beware of covetousness. And I think one of the things that stood out for me last week was that the reason we are told to beware mm-hmm. is because it is a stilty, you know, it's, a, it's creeping. Mm-hmm. It does not come on your face. It comes and awares. It just creeps in, and before you know it, it has been with you long enough. So um, it's a sin that it's inward. It's a sin that it's a sin of the heart that nobody can tell that you're actually sinning. Yet you are actually falling, and you're falling many times. So uh, it, it's one of the things that has really been a big eye opener uh, 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 to me lately. That I may have been coveting a lot without knowing. And especially the part where, where we learned that, that when you have, you know, the case of Ananias and Sapphira, when you have, uh, you know, pledged to give something to someone or to God, it does not belong to you. Mm. The moment you say, the moment you commit and say, I will give this, it, it no longer becomes yours. So if you start thinking or entertaining thoughts of using it, let alone using it, just imagining you could use it, you're already coveting. And it, it originally belonged to you. So that was really powerful for me. True. Thanks. Very true. Yeah. Uh, Raf, before we go to you, maybe we, we did forget how to, we forgot to pray. So I'd ask you to pray for us, even as we begin. All right. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father and Master, Lord in heaven, we thank you and praise your name for giving us a breath of life and an opportunity to be able to gather together to worship you and to delve into your word. Now we ask that you may give us of your spirit, the same spirit that inspires the authors of the lesson and of the Bible from which we are drawing these lessons, to be with us and to guide us. Open our minds, dear Lord, and above all else, open our hearts that we may be affected by the message and we may uh, make decisions for you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tell me, Raph, what has stood out for you this quarter? I think uh, uh, beyond what uh, Maurice has uh, highlighted about covetousness, which I think it's it, I think it's something that uh, affects many of us. And as he says, it creeps in very slowly Mm -hmm. when you compare yourself uh, with your neighbor who gets promoted, when you compare yourself. And uh, over time, you find a Christian, uh, eventually you are not satisfied with your life. Uh, You are disgruntled and you feel as if God is not coming through for you, whereas God is actually doing the best thing that he can do for you at that particular point and juncture in life. Another point, another lesson that stood out to me is a lesson before the one for covetousness where it speaks to us about planning for success and the necessity of of integrity in in all our affairs, especially as Christians. I think I, overall, I find the lesson, this quarter's lesson to, to, be, um, to be boots on the ground, a very practical uh, day-to-day um, uh, issues being tackled. And, uh, and, 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 and generally, if we follow this, this, uh, this lesson beyond uh, this quarter, mm-hmm. then I'm sure even our lives materially and uh, socially will improve. Mm. Mm. Amen. Elta. Um, <coughs> I want to thank God that many times when we look at stewardship it has never been in the family context Mm -hmm. for many years but this quarter has been unique it is started by belonging to where to god's God's what family Family. and even you see as the lessons progress Mm -hmm. 
you find the family coming in and in all this you find that we are told that all our treasures should be where in heaven and that is the only safe place that we can place but for us to be able to place those treasures in heaven and to effectively manage this an issue brother Unsong has mentioned planning in fact we will not say enough for planning plan 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 even today's lesson mm -hmm. giving back you cannot just give back mm -hmm. you have to plan what to give back and how much to do what and in heaven you must plan to place your treasures in heaven mm -hmm. so it's it is it is really challenging me in fact the aspect of planning is something that uh, <clears throat> has really touched me in this quarter i, I remember there is a question you asked me one time uh, some lesson back about um, offerings mm. now we have the technology <laughs> How do I teach my children to give? Yes. Then I realized there are a few things I've been doing. And then I realized now I need to intensify. Mm. Right now, the offering envelope, I don't pick it on the Sabbath I'm giving offering. Mm. I pick it a Sabbath earlier. Then I go plan now. <laughs> so that as we leave home, every envelope has what? Something inside. And a name written. When we come to church, it's only through what? Give. To give. So this aspect of planning mm -hmm. is really what has caught my attention. And has really molded me in terms of managing all these resources. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think for me, the lesson that stood out for me, there have been so many. You know, I kept asking myself, like I, I've, I've told you, uh, gentlemen, before, that I normally, I am a children's teacher. I rarely do adult lessons. So this is one quarter that completely caught me off guard that I was doing adult lesson. But I thank God. God must have had a purpose for me in this lesson. One of them was dealing with debt. And um, like, you know, I was giving you guys an example of the fact that I, I reached a point where someone owed me money. And the realization that, the Lord requires us sometimes to let go. And mm. I, 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 I really, I've never felt so free about that particular debt that I did let go and I'm done. I'm, I really let it go and, and I gave it to the Lord and it's, I'm not sure I'll ever look back. It's over. And so like the struggle I'd, I'd carried with me for many years of that um, unpaid debt, the Lord allowed me to release it. And let Amen. it go, Amen. you know. Amen. So I thank God, and and yes, and 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 the one also, Raf, we were with you in terms of the value of work, you know, and and just realizing just that God, you know, God keeps a record, mm -hmm. you know. In the course of this this quarter, also we have learned the fact that you know, like your arms and your offerings have come before the Lord. I never had really realized that, eh? and mm -hmm. knowing that that which we give, whether it's it's a beggar on the street who you have given with a pure heart, the, your arms. And your offerings come before the Lord mm. in remembrance. That the Lord is not an unfair God. He does remember that which we give. So I thank God. It's been a great lesson. So today let's look at what do you mean by giving back. And we have just looked at our memory verse this morning, which I, t I, I totally love, Revelation 14 and verse 13. And as I was looking at uh, the summary that, I like reading this summary because um, it's a summary, it gives us a place to start. Huh? So as uh, the, the summary this week was saying, as we near the end of our earning years and our financial focus, focus turns towards preserving our assets in anticipation of the end of life, then the transition from working to retirement can be very traumatic. And we, we did discuss that uh, some time mm -hmm. in terms of our finances. So what is the best way to proceed? So as people get, get older, they, um, they almost naturally begin to worry about the future. And we are getting older. The other day I was saying just how I'm suddenly realizing I'm in midlife, you know. And the most common fears are dying too soon. Before the family is taken care of, living too long, you know, when you're living in your 90s, outliving one's assets or savings, catastrophic illness, you know, 
We have seen people, people we know, you know, someone is involved in an accident and that completely changes their lives, their ability to earn, their mm. ability to work, yeah, and to take care of their own. A mental or physical disability, you know, which then means that uh, it, who will take care of you? Mm. What happens to you after this? So when, when uh, but Mrs. White, Mrs. White in the book Testimonies to the Churches, Volume 1, uh, page 424 says that, you know, all these fears originate from Satan. If they would take the position which God would have them now, these people who are feeling these fears, eh? mm -hmm. their last days might be the best and happiest. They should lay aside anxiety and burdens and, oc that oc and occupy their time as happily as they can and be ripening for heaven. Amen. Yeah? So this week, let's look at, you know, our last days. I know, I know, we're looking at each other here and thinking, who is, who is anticipating being in their last days? But you know, the interesting thing is that, um, you know, I was listening this week also to the lesson discussion, I think Hope Channel uh, lesson discussion, and, and Pastor Lomakin was saying that we probably will die three ways. We'll die of old age, we'll die of a disease, or we'll die of an accident. Yeah. So disease and accident is no respecter of any one of us here at this point in time. So that means today we are here, we do not know about tomorrow. So the question is, how are we planning for, for you know, how are we planning to take care of our families? How are we planning to take care of our assets and the properties we have acquired in this time? So as we begin our lesson, let, I want to start with you this morning. We were looking at uh, a young man, you know, the rich fool, and, and, and that look, look, look chapter, uh, chapter 12 from verse 6 to 21. And I don't know, Elder, if you had, um, you know, as you were looking at that lesson, in terms of why does the Lord call this man a fool? And we probably might want to look at it uh, from the Bible. I don't know if maybe uh, Maurice or, or, or Ralph can open for us. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 12, verse uh, 16 to 21. So as Elder responds to us, like, why? Why would the Lord call this man a fool? Uh, thank you, my sister. <clears throat> Before I, I say why God is calling this man a rich fool, mm. the introduction was amazing to me. Look at the topic, giving back. Yeah. Then look at the introduction. Start with the memo text. Mm. He's talking about what? Blessed are they who die in the Lord. <laughs> are the dead mm. which die in the Lord from henceforth. So, is death giving back? Mm. At what point are we giving back? And what is it that we are giving back? In fact, the lesson writer has talked about when we approach our sunset years. Uh, fear will start creeping in. When I hit fifth floor, there was one day just <laughs> fear hit me. <laughs> and there are several things I looked about myself. I looked about my family. And then I even looked about my church. I remember even uh, one time telling my students, I have been your patron for over 20 years. I now have nine years, and I'm not seeing anyone in sight. <laughs> These are the fears. They, they are real. Yeah? The lesson I, I right, was not just imagining. They are real. And I'm thinking seriously. Now, who is going to take over patroning this world? The students. About myself and my family, there are several things I thought about. I may not talk about them. Now, I have seen when our relatives die. Mm. We're writing what? Yeah? Yeah, the eulogy. Have you ever seen how much we struggle? What is it that we are writing about what? <laughs> about this person. Yeah. In fact, the Bible is saying, those who die in the Lord, their works follow them. So what is it that you want to tell the world that this man or this lady was a big man, is a big woman, who did this, who did this, 
who did this, who has left this, you know, who had a vision for this. Sometimes we do struggle. I remember when my dad died, then people started telling me some things he used to tell them. Then I, this lesson reminded me that there are several things that are going to impact society after you leave. There are several things that are going to encourage others after you do what? After you leave. And it is something that we need to think about so much. But as we think about that, the lesson writer was very critical and I'm happy you brought it out. Worries. Yeah. I want to mention you something uh, humorous I thought about one time. Suppose I'm having a terminal illness, very bad one, and it requires many, many, many millions to treat me. Do I tell my family to leave me, just rest, and to save this little money for them, or they take me for treatment? <laughs> yeah. But the Lord always reminds us not to be what? To be negative. Mm. Because God always takes what? Charge. Mm. And I'm happy the way Ellen White puts it. That they should lay aside anxiety mm. and burdens. Those burdens that we have as we grow old. Lay them what? Aside. And occupy their time as happily as they can. And be ripening up for heaven. Mm. Now... <clears throat> My happiness is this, that even if you die now and leave small children, do you think they will never grow up? Grow Haven't we seen many children who have been left alone and they have grown up? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So God takes care of this. And this is the emphasis Ellen White was trying to put across. Mm -hmm. That however much you may think and worry, mm -hmm. you cannot do anything beyond the time you do what? You rest. Now, <clears throat> the reason why... Maybe actually, uh, Elder, before yes. you get there, maybe actually I, sh I, I should give the, re the rest of the, 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 the panelists just some thoughts on that uh, opening um, remarks because that's really powerful, Elder, what you have said. I don't know if there are any thoughts from you, Raf, on, on that opening part first. Mm, it's interesting. I think even um, Elder has made me uh, reflect on the same. That it's, uh, uh, The wording is, uh, is, is quite something. It says, blessed are the dead. Mm. You know, uh, and, the, and it, it emphasizes that die in the Lord. Mm. So there's dying and there's dying in the Lord. Mm. Uh, there are two groups of people who, who die. But these are the ones who die in the Lord. And it says that they may rest mm. from their labors. Mm. In essence, it means to them living, being alive, uh, the process of being alive is a, is a laborious process. They're working. Yes, it is burdensome, and it's not that, the, it's not that it's a, it, it is a wearisome toil, but rather it is, it is something that they enjoy, mm -hmm. that they are working. Mm -hmm. They are working, and beyond that, it says, and their works do what? Follow, follow them. That their works do follow them. And so, in the context of, um, of the reti retiring, even in retirement, then as Christians, we should still be working. Mm -hmm. Because only, only in death, and in, in death in the Lord, do we truly do what? rest from our labors. We fully really rest from our labors. So uh, it calls for us to ask ourselves um, the question then, do Christians retire? Wow. Can I say that I have served God for X years? Mm -hmm. Now it is enough. Yeah, I should sit back and, uh, and leave uh, matters to, to the younger generation. Uh, things are changing. This is the way uh, uh, the world is moving now. Yeah. You know, things like that. So uh, it, it, it calls for us, whether we are working or not, um, that as Christians uh, uh, and uh, as children of God, until the time that we rest uh, and sleep, in the sleep of death, that indeed we continue laboring. So even if you have retired from um, your vocation, whatever vocation you, you practiced, as, uh, as a, even as a retiree, you still have something to do for God. And so hence... Which can also we can also tie it back with the title, giving back, giving back. Mm. Thank you. I, I think for me, um, uh, they have just beautifully summed it up. But um, 
somebody said one thing uh, which was very impactful to me that when you retire you you don't just retire from work but you also supposed to be retiring to something all right so many people retire from something but to nothing because um, as a christian we are supposed to be in view of our retirement time even before it comes even when you get your first appointment letter you're still in your early 20s fresh from campus bear in mind that age 60 is coming and you will one day retire and start planning on as a christian when you retire from work active service to your nation to the community and to the world what do you retire to after you have earned and gained and amassed mm -hmm. then what then will be your purpose in your in your in your uh, you know later years in life reminds me of a, of a, of a lady a story is told of a lady who 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 was in a, her very very old age i think over a hundred and something but she was still able to walk and talk around and but and and, and and her children were you know big people in the society and they were taking care of her and uh, and uh, somebody came and asked her so how do you manage to to continue living how do you get your food how do you eat at this age you can't work you know then she went like you know my children are my life you know oh god please don't take my children away from me because the day they decided to die i also die but if if they choose to die lord please take me first before they die because I cannot live without them. This is somebody who still wants to continue living, but they feel like uh, their life is hanging upon the life of their children. That is an, a, purpose, a purposeless retirement. So I think this introduction is very, is very you know, instructive to us. Even as you retire, there's a bigger, greater purpose as a Christian. But even before you retire, after you have achieved every it's like every success by, by the world's definition. Mm -hmm. You know, you've had it all. You've seen it all. You've done that, been there. What, there's, there's something called purpose, mm -hmm. which wealth and money cannot give you. So th this is a constant question that needs to be, you know, lingering in our minds. What is this purpose? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That is so, so powerful. And it, it, it just figures us very well to now this question then. After we have done all these things, we have amassed this wealth elder. Why is the Lord calling us a fool then? Why is it the Lord calling this man a rich fool? In, in fact, uh, on that title, mm. uh, the rich fool. Mm. In fact, I was asking myself, the rich fool or the rich fools? It's not just one. Mm. But many of us. You know, <clears throat> it is so amazing. Eh? Jesus, from verse 16, mm -hmm. is talking about this so parable. That's Luke chapter 12? Yeah, chapter 12. Okay. Verse 16, he says, The ground of a certain rich man, not the rich fool, mm. <laughs> mm. a rich man. 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 So there's no problem in being what? Rich, rich. rich. Mm. yielded plentifully. Mm. Here is a rich man. And I thank God that he has made all of us rich. Mm. But now the problem begins. The ground has yielded much. much. Mm. Probably my sister Marcy, <laughs> uh, or my brother Zongo, my brother Morris. <coughs> That you have gotten a certain increase and it has been backdated, as we say in government. <laughs> <laughs> it has been what? Backdated. That's really good news. <laughs> <laughs> now, mm. that's the language. Mm. I think th this is what Jesus is saying. Mm. That the salary of a rich man mm. <laughs> yeah, was what? Increased. Mm and backdated. Mm. Now you get all this money. How do you behave? Mm. You have seen that pay slip. Mm. They start excitement. Now the money is in your hands. Mm. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Interestingly, <clears throat> men 
people are rich fools. End month, you hear people saying, "Waja ni pigie mwili pole." Let me say sorry to my what? To my body. <laughs> to my body. I've worked very hard. <laughs> mm. Yes. Then, probably you are building, eh? And you have seen this money can really push your building a great deal. The question is this. As you plan to say sorry to your body, as you plan for your building, as you plan to do all these things, the question is, where is God? Mm. That is where the foolishness comes in. Mm. That when you get this plentiful, where is God? Do you have him come first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember some time back I mentioned about the first salary. Mm -hmm. What do you normally do with it? Yeah. The very first salary when you were employed. Where is God? Mm -hmm. You open pray, God give me what? What are you giving back? Where is he? Mm -hmm. In the whole context. Mm -hmm. Now this is where the problem was. This man hadn't done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. The only problem is how he had planned to spend mm -hmm. what God had entrusted in him. Mm -hmm. And this is how he had planned. Mm -hmm. There was no problem. Verse uh, 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. When the uh, yield was plentiful, he decided, let me expand my stores mm -hmm. to accommodate all this. Yeah. But problem begins in verse 19. Mm -hmm. And I will say to my soul, mm. th the way we normally say, my body. Mm. Let me say sorry to my, my body. We don't remember that our bodies belong to who? To God. To God. Mm. He says, soul, mm -hmm. you have many goods. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> you have many what? Goods. Mm. Laid up for many years. Wow, 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 wow. Now, mercy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine? For the next 30 years, <laughs> <I'm covered. laughs> eh? mm. you have enough to take, you, to take care of you for the next 30 years. Mm. What do you tell yourself? Then the guy says, take easy. <laughs> Just do what? Relax. And then do what? Just eat. Uh -huh. Drink. Drink mm. And, be and be merry. Mm. Look at the context. There are many goods laid out for many years. Mm. This guy is going to spend these many years mm. just doing nothing except what? Eating. Eating, drinking, and being what? Merry. Merry. This is where the foolishness comes in. Mm. Many at times, do we forget God's work yeah. Yeah. when we have been blessed? Mm. That we spend more time elsewhere mm. on doing purposeless things. Mm. Eating, drinking, and marrying. Mm. For what purpose? Mm. So, this is where the foolishness comes. And it is a warning to us mm -hmm. to think about this wealth that comes to us mm -hmm. and that comes from who? God. From God. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says he's the one who gives us power to get what? To get wealth. Mm -hmm. What do we do with it once it lands in our hands? Mm -hmm. Do we throw God out of the window? Mm -hmm. Or do we tell him, take a back seat, now we'll show you what should be done with what you have given us. Thank you very much. Oh, that is so powerful. In terms of what are we living for? What are you living for, you know? But um, the realization that, and, and, this, and this man, because the Bible says that the Lord told him that you fall, because, you know, um, tonight, actually, uh, the version of the Bible that I have to actually says, tonight you will die, then who will get it all? You know, if the Lord was to ask us that. And, and the truth is, we have said death is a reality. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole question of like, all this that we have amassed, the truth is, where are we taking it? 
you will not take it with you. So Maurice, we have said this, this, this morning that the truth is right now, none of us knows our tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow, only this moment where we are today. And everything you have amassed, and it's good, we, we have also learned from today that there is nothing wrong with being rich, actually. It's not that the Lord is castigating the rich. He's just the attitude that we have in our relationship to money. So in looking at the fact that you cannot take it with you, the truth is all that we will ever do for you, Morris, is a six by six hole in the ground. Ultimately. That's it. Yeah. We won't even put you down with, maybe we'll, we'll give you the honor of putting you a beautiful suit. <laughs> and a fancy casket. It. And a fancy casket, a, ca a casket actually. But that's it. So the fact that we will not take it with us, Maurice, take us through how should we then relate to this thing? Thank you, Marcy. You know, I, I, I like the seamless connection between these two segments. The segment of the rich fool who relaxes and sits easy and makes merry and says, tells his soul, um, you know, kupigia uh, mwili pole. Mm. Um, and then it just, rude shock on him, it just dawns on him that his life is going to be taken away from him that very night, which means he has only a few hours to live. Mm. And, and, then, and then all these things that he had been, uh, you know, looking at, you know, the way you, you look at your bank balance, and it's a lot. And you get some satisfaction from it. You know, in our country, there, there are different communities. Eh? The community from where I come, we don't do that. We spend it. <laughs> but from where other people come from, I don't want to mention. <laughs> they, they like looking at the bank balance and they, 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 get, they draw some satisfaction. 20 million, you know, 50 million. Wow. So they look at you and they know where they're, you guys are poor, but this is to Jonyeshi. We are just, you know, this was the state of the rich yeah. fool. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he did not know one, one wisdom mm -hmm. that he, he is not going to take any of these mm -hmm. things with him. And it just dawns on us even today mm -hmm. that since you can't take it away with you, how then ought you to spend it? First of all, what is the use of amassing it mm -hmm. in the first place, if you must? Right, um, I like uh, this quote by Ellen White. I don't know in which book, but I think you you have come across it. That that God has blessed us. God blesses us, mm -hmm. not because we are supposed to hoard mm -hmm. or keep or amass, you know, property, but He blesses us as a channel through which we can be able to bless others. Mm -hmm. And he goes, she goes ahead and says that 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 um, a stagnant, you know, pool. Mm -hmm is unpleasant and offensive to the surrounding. But a flowing river always is always fresh. It gives fresh water. Mm -hmm. It is not salty. It can benefit the surrounding, including it can offer life. Mm -hmm. The essence of water is just life. You know, so everybody around it is able to draw life from it. So, so are we a stagnant pool, like the rich young fool, who amasses what you cannot take with you? I like Psalm, Psalm 49. Psalm 49 and verse 17. It's actually very blunt. Mm. <laughs> it says, Psalm 49, 17, it says, For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. Mm. His glory shall not descend after him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you contrast that with our key text? His glory shall not descend after him. And our key text says, Their works, Their works, works shall follow, follow them. them. Mm. The works of righteousness can actually follow you. Yeah. But if you amass your wealth, the wealth that you have in this world, you know, cannot descend after you. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it is important to build a character that is, that is able to follow you mm -hmm. than to amass wealth which cannot follow you. Amen. So, for me, I think uh, um, you cannot take it with you. It remains here. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you give it back, in the context of giving it back, uh, if I were the rich young fool, or if I knew, if the rich young fool, if the rich fool knew what we know now, he would have made better decisions on how to manage his finances. Perhaps instead of building a bigger store, you know he had stores, but the Bible says he went and built a bigger one. <laughs> so instead of building a bigger store, the surplus he would have used to help the poor, or the surplus he would have taken to the storehouse of God, Malachi. We are told, bring all the tithes into the storehouse of, 
or into my, into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Try me in this thing. If I will not, you know, it's a beautiful word. God allows us even to try him. But this guy, in Jesus' parable, remember it's a parable by Jesus, so it is not something that actually happened. Jesus is careful not to mention that this guy was uh, gave any tithes. Yes. We are not told he gave any tithes or he gave any offerings or he paid any alms. So what a godless life. A life devoid of eternity. A, a life devoid of, of spirituality. You know? So th that, is, that is the warning we get on this day. Mm -hmm. You will not take it with you. So you better invest it correctly. The Bible says, lay up your treasures in heaven mm -hmm. where no, neither rust nor moth can destroy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Rust, let me come to you on the same point. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 18 to 22, the Bible says, and I am disgusted by this, that I must leave the fruit of all my hard work to others. <laughs> and who can tell whether my son will be a wise man or a fool? Mm. And yet all I have will be given to him. How discouraging. You know, this is a very, you know, I like a simple English. Yeah. I, I understand simplicity. Ras, I mean rough, sorry. Having known that, so what ought we to do with this which we have, because we do have this wealth. And actually, as, 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 as you know, Solomon is, is, is writing in Ecclesiastes, the truth is, we will leave it to others. How do we ensure then that we leave it wisely? Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I mean, I'd borrow back from the, from the, from the, from the story in Luke, Luke 12. The Bible begins in verse 16, and it says that the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. So it, from the word go, this man was not poor. Mm. So whether the ground brought forth plentifully or, uh, or if the harvest then w failed, this man was rich. Mm -hmm. He was wealthy. He was, uh, God had already blessed him. Mm. It is only that uh, perhaps God uh, decided to increase for some strange reason, increase his, his favor mm. upon him, his, his yield. And so as the elder told us, he, he goes into, he starts addressing himself, you mm. know, in the third person. He mm. speaks to himself, <laughs> literally. He has a conversation to himself. And even says, I'll sp I am saying to my soul. Yes. <laughs> soul, you have, now is your time to relax. Yes. Perhaps maybe, mm. you know, we live um, in an age where sometimes even mm. myself, uh, I think about it uh, in terms of um, maybe the years I've spent in school. Mm. Then, the, um, then I also think, of how long do I want to work? Then there's a way people glorify. There are people you read on social media or, on, or in the papers and they write books and we say, so also the monk who sold his Ferrari mm. and other funny, <laughs> funny, funny titles uh, of, people who, of people who left their jobs early mm. and actually are living a good life. You know, some people say how you sh why you should retire by age 50 or by age 40. Mm. And there's so many other things uh, which draw your attention and, uh, and, you, and, you, and we all are... Uh, we look forward to retiring early mm. and being comfortable, which was what this guy saw. He saw an opportunity. Mm. And um, as he said, he decided to build uh, larger bands for himself, mm. which, is, which, is, which, is a sad, which is a sad situation. Um, so what about us as a church then? When we are blessed, what, what then do even you as an individual, when we are blessed, how do, do we move to a better neighborhood? Yeah. Uh, do we buy better cars as a church? Do we now look, say, these benches are uncomfortable, let's look for sofa sets, <laughs> you know? Vis-a-vis -vis, uh, not acknowledging that the work of the church is not to babysit us and to have us sit mm -hmm. comfortably here in the pews, mm -hmm. but rather to reach and impact our society. Yeah. What are we doing for the needs of those with whom God has given us resources to use? Mm -hmm. And bearing from what Morris has said, uh, if you read from Sister White, she says, all the resources that the church needs to finish God's work are within the church in, in and of itself. We have the means, we have the resources, mm -hmm. but we are sitting on them. Yeah. And... Um, we're looking forward maybe to a time when we shall be revived and men and women shall, shall come forth like the apostolic church, mm. the story of Ananias and Sapphira when others are giving uh, of, of everything they sell and they give and, they, and the gospel goes forth. Ananias and Sapphira think of making a, a profit and, and, and retaining something. But as Solomon says, you know, you can work so hard. Mm. You can work so hard. We've seen, and uh, I don't know whether you've noticed it, uh, we've seen men and women who are successful in a particular field mm. And they have a lot of money. But when it comes to the children, the children are, are only interested in spending the money. 
You've seen they don't even want to study. Yeah. They don't want to. They just want to have a good time. Uh, bikers, uh, no responsibility at all, and and it's something that I, that is frustrating. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, beyond it all, um, as Solomon tells us, and as the lesson writer says, these resources, these things, we are given. We are blessed to bless others. Mm -hmm. This man was already rich, and uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't as if his farm was going to be was going to disappear after mm -hmm. that. There will be many other harvests. And so he would have chanced upon income again and again. He wasn't going to be poor. And so um, eventually, as you said, death comes. Death comes, and, and death did come. God uh, told him, it's very foolish for you to plan for the future, especially planning for the future with a selfish angle. Yeah. And so it talks, it talks to us that even as we are planning for the future, let us uh, plan with God and with the things of God in mind. Mm. Let us always put God as a big picture that your retirement plan far and beyond all other things should be heaven mm. for us as Christians. Mm. That is our retirement plan, to work for God and eventually to hear those words being said, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter now ye into my rest, mm. the real rest mm. for the saints um, up, up in heaven. And so... Um, these things we can, never, we can never take. Psalms 14 verse 1, as I close, the Bible, David writes and says, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. That there is no God. So this man was not acknowledging the place of God mm. in providing for him. Mm. You know, sometimes, as Morris has said, we hold some things even sometimes to the extent that we ourselves can suffer. Mm. An example of uh, maybe you say you won't buy this thing which you need and therefore you become a burden to others. Yeah over something that you yourself can afford. Yeah. Eh? Like so maybe you can afford to buy a car, but you insist on being given a lift by your neighbor every time, every time, every time, every time, because you are quote-unquote saving. Uh, and then maybe one day along, uh, when, when your neighbor is not there and you're walking home, maybe it, it, is, it is late, you can be attacked. And when you are attacked, people will wonder why was this guy walking at night <laughs> and he could afford to have safe passage. You know, you'd rather have bought that car and arrived home safely, and uh, and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But that that is the way we 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 behave with the things that God has given us. We it's as if we don't really trust God to take care of tomorrow, and so we must secure it by ourselves and by all means necessary. But the lesson here is trying to tell us that we live uh, our moving and our being is simply by the grace and the mercies of God, and. God blesses us to be a blessing to others. And let's not uh, be caught up in thinking only about ourselves. Oh, mm. That is so powerful. And, uh, I think every time I sit here, I learn so much. And, and, and uh, the writer, as I want us to go to Tuesday part that's talking about... Before we move to Tuesday, yes. there's a very important point here <coughs> that I learned. Yes. Estate planning. Yes. What gonna... have you planned mm with what God has given you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether they start fought by eight plot. Mm. What have you planned for it? Yes. Many are times, and uh, all of us realize the problem we have in this country, yes. unclaimed assets, oh. authority, mm. Mm. <laughs> property that exists. Yeah. The government does not know what to do with it. Yeah. And they're looking for relatives. Yeah. And that's why when you read the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, mm. it comes to my mind. Some people even hide that because they don't mm. want others to benefit from them. Yeah. But still they don't know that the government will still be looking for the same, same people mm. whom you don't want to do what? To give. Yes. And it is something that we need to have. We need to have a will while we are still alive. Amen. And a plan. Mm on how this property and this wealth will be distributed. Mm -hmm. Family members, church, mm. and other needs. Mm. I was told of a story of MZ. This old man, when he was still very strong, he brought a surveyor to his farm. And he told him, to subdivide the piece of land among the children. He processed the title deeds. And they called these children, Masi, mm. Onsongo, Morris, mm. Manyara. Yeah. <clears throat> he asked them, anybody with a question? Mm -hmm. You ask it now. 
anyone who is not satisfied let me know right now because i don't want you to fight when i am gone i found that very amazing so you you can realize such kind of a father will have a great family because these children know what belongs to them what i don't know whether he left anything for god <laughs> because the writer was saying that uh, after we have finished with what god has entrusted to us we should return to him the rightful honor what is left once the needs of our loved ones are met so we must plan for the family and then what remains we give it to god's cause thank you amen mm -hmm. that was so powerful elder and and it was very important because we we know how many families in this country who had very wealthy you know uh, patriarchs but are still fighting they're still in court today mm -hmm. because they're still fighting over wealth let's not do that to church uh, to children of god when we have he is given us an opportunity to learn and and actually basically just continuing very quickly from that is that now in that planning the fact that we do want to live a will we want to 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 make our plans you know we want to ensure that our children are covered um and, and the work of god is covered so that means we're looking at we we need to begin with with personal needs uh, so god is not selfish to say that bring everything to the church because also there there are those who have done that yeah like you have denied uh, your children um <laughs> of an inheritance, I, I think also God is not saying that. He's saying, take care of your children, yes. So begin with personal needs. But then, as, you, as you're planning to ensure that this work is done, then leave some for God's work. Because that's what we are saying. So in this, and, and I want to come back to you, Elder, really, so that we, we, you, you can take us through this. In, 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 like in Bible times, the, Israeli, uh, the children of Israel were talking about, you know, they were shepherds, they were farmers. And so, of course, they're looking at um, uh, that, like... It was about buns and, 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 and what the harvest. Eh? But for us today, we are saying blessing God's work. You know, the, the, ensuring that God's work is taken care of. But you also diligence to ensure that you take care of your business. So today, you cannot say that you brought your entire wealth and you have left your children without school fees, Elder. So, so take us through in terms of then where do we begin to ensure that we are taking care of our own personal needs, but ultimately ensuring that God's work is, is taken care of. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, um, I, I want to give this illustration. <clears throat> there are many times mm. children complain about the dressing of their fathers. <laughs> 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 Not mothers, eh? Yeah, no. They are what? <laughs> fathers. They are fathers. Mm. And the reason being that this man mm. is not dressing well to their expectations as their father. Mm. But many are the times this father sacrificed because of these children not dressing well. Mm. But then they are now reprimanding what? Mm. <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> the reality is, even when you're sacrificing, you do not have to ignore yourself. I have seen people who ignore themselves completely to the point where they do not even eat so that they can reserve something for their family without realizing that at the end of the day, they need energy to work for that family. And that's why the lesson writer <clears throat> is reminding us that <clears throat> you don't have to be a big man yeah. out there. Are you a big man at home? Yes. There are cases where people ignore their families because they want to do greater things in church. Mm -hmm. I'm a church elder. Mm -hmm. Now there's uh, fundraising. Mm -hmm. I pledge a hundred thousand. The children have no what? Food. School fees. Mm. As a lady, maybe you are the leader of women ministries. Mm. <laughs> you also pledge. Mm. Or we are serving friends. Yeah. 
Like there was a very interesting case of a mother who could deny his children, food, her children food, but they draw big parties for friends. In fact, if you look at the book of uh, Proverbs, chapters 27, verses 27. It says, you shall have enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of your household, and the nourishment of your maid servants. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 27, 27. We have been given the order of meeting the needs. Number one, for your food. Yeah. Brother Morris, yes. for your food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then, for your yeah. household. Yes, yeah. those nice children of yours and wife. Yeah. Then number three. And yeah. for the nourishment of your maid servants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've heard of cases where maid servants are cooking for themselves yeah. in someone's house. Yeah? Mm. Your blessings must flow in that direction. Mm -hmm. They must eat mm -hmm. that food which God has provided for this world, mm. for this family. So before we even think about meeting the needs, mm -hmm. we must begin with ourselves, our family, and then our servants before we move outside that household. Mm -hmm. Remember the, the maid servants do a lot of work yes. in your household. Yes. And that is where they must also be what? Right. Be provided for. In fact, how much food will they eat yeah. if you gave them the food to eat? <laughs> will it make you poor? Mm. And God has blessed us mm -hmm. and he has given us power to make what? To make riches. Yeah. So, in short, good stewardship yeah. of what God has blessed us mm -hmm. with doesn't deal only with what we have mm -hmm. while alive, mm -hmm. but also with what happens after we, we are gone. We are gone. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we must also think very critically that from the time to time mm -hmm. during when we are earning, mm -hmm. yeah? it would be appropriate to review our wills and other documents and our present assets. Always think about them mm -hmm. to ensure that there is enough. Mm -hmm. Not only when we are alive, but also after we, we are gone. We are gone. Mm -hmm. There sometimes we draw parties. We do greater things for our children. Mm -hmm. But when we are gone, children live that luxurious life they were living in town. Mm. Going to the village where there was no even ha a house. Mm. Mm. These children even drop out of what? Out of school. Out of school. Mm. So when we are meeting these needs, good stewardship talks about meeting these personal needs mm -hmm. while we are still alive mm -hmm. and even when we are gone. Mm. We must ensure that the family is left with what? It's Something. And what does that mean? Mm -hmm. that Think about small. of investing something small. Mm. That you will live for the what? For the family. For the family. Mm. You've seen in funerals when people come and give big pledges. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone say, for the whole high school I've taken care of. Mm. In the meantime, I've given 50,000. Mm. When you follow up that person, you never see him. Yeah. True. Thank you very That's much. True. Let me talk to you, Raf, because, um, I mean, uh, when you have a family, sometimes it's easier to think about a will. And I don't know if we have, we have wills, even as we, st we are sitting here. <laughs> so may the Lord challenge us if we, ha if we are planning. But sometimes, so when you have a family, it's easier. When, when you're on, on your own and you're, um, so you have, you're, you're working, so you have an income. Practically, do we ever think about wills? At that point in time, what happens to your, to, to if today uh, this was the end, what would happen to your, that list of beneficiaries and that, your pension? <laughs> All right. Um, put me on the spot there. I have. I uh, know, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, personally, uh, if, I may, if I was to answer the question on a personal level, um, I put part of, part of my funds in the money market. Uh, where there is usually some next of kin. Mm. So uh, 
as of now because I do not have my own household. <laughs> uh, it's probably my siblings uh, yeah. in a particular order mm -hmm. with percentages. And uh, if by chance I, I go before my parents, I think I put my parents there. Uh, but far and beyond that, I think generally you raise a very significant question that sometimes we find, uh, I don't know, for some strange reason, we think wheels are an African. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And uh, in fact, um, we, maybe, I don't know, maybe we are close to the Israelites. Yeah. Like uh, we, most of us can relate uh, with the prodigal son, now in fact mm. the, with the father's mercy. Because mm. it is al almost something unheard of um, uh, to ask your father for your inheritance mm. while he is still alive. Yeah. I can mm. borrow even from my own uh, experience with my grandfather and my grandmother. Usually, uh, property is hardly divided mm. until they die. Yeah. Now, and after they've died, now it becomes, most of the time, it becomes chaos. Even yeah. siblings now whom, who came from the same uh, home and were brought up together, have similar experiences, they no longer see face mm -hmm. to face. I've heard of, experience, of examples of even past sometimes when perhaps a brother dies and an uncle now takes advantage of the children, mm. of the widow and the children, mm. and, uh, and their next land that isn't theirs. So I think uh, this lesson is important for us as Christians. Uh, it calls for us to change our mindsets and yeah. the way we view some of these things. Uh, as Elder said, that's a wonderful example. I don't know whether the man is Kisi, but uh, who divided his land before, before departing. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's something I believe even we as a, the younger generation, if I, if I could say, um, and, uh, and, 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 and our times right now, mm -hmm. something we should think about. We think, of course, a will is something that usually you can review from time to time with your lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that uh, is, because things change, mm -hmm. things change. Perhaps somebody, a beneficiary may die, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, things, your relationship with these people may change, okay. but it is always good to have uh, some sort of um, uh, structure. For example, even Christ before dying, he gave instructions. Mm -hmm. He gave instructions. He, he, he left a will, so to say. And so his disciples were not confused. Mm. He gave them the, even the Holy Spirit, you know. Mm. And uh, he gave them power. He gave them something. And, and the, the church was able to be organized and, mm. to, and to go beyond that. So I think it's something we, we all ought to think about. Very true. I like that, Ralph, because Jesus had even made instructions of who would take care of his mother. Yeah? Of who would take care of his mother. He thought about her and he, and he asked John to take care of his behold mother. Your mother. Yeah, son, you know. Your yes, you know, like he actually did think about his mother. I'd never really thought about that. Um, uh, Maurice. Hey. Uh, my sister, yes, yes. <coughs> before maybe Maurice can also <laughs> talk about it, mm. there's something that uh, <laughs> Zonga has mentioned. And it has struck me. Mm. <clears throat> Those who are married like me, mm. you and Morris. Mm. Why is it that all the property and all the wealth mm. is in my name and no single property is in my wife's name? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, it is something challenging. We have seen cases where a spouse dies yeah. and the remaining spouse is in big trouble yeah. because whatever he left has been grabbed by, by, relatives. by all others. Mm. Now the family is left with nothing. That's true, Elder. Yeah, maybe it's something that we need to... We do need to think about it. And especially yes. in Africa, that whole... Elder, thank you so much. And we do need, um, as we're wrapping up, um, Maurice... This deathbed, as even as we look at why why we are not why we are not um, we are not keen to ensure that we have thought through, it's it's a fear that God needs to give us the ability to 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 like overcome. There is this deathbed of charity, as in some people wait. You know, you wait till the very end. Then you think, now you know, I'll wait. I will use up all my money. I will amass it, and then just before I die, I'll give it to the work of God or I'll give it to others. But what are we learning today about our relationship with, uh, with, you know, with property, possession, and material wealth while we are still alive? You know, this which you plan and say, I need to give, but you have to wait till you're almost dead. I think most people wait until they're in their deathbed mm. because for some reason that's when they see the true you know, uselessness yes. of yeah. the wealth that mm. they have been amassing all their lives. But wisdom is given to us. So we can take it or reject it, much to our detriment. Um, 
Uh, the Bible says in First uh, Timothy six seventeen, the charge the rich among you. Can you just read it? Yes. It's a charge. The charge is like a command. You know. Uh, I'm sure other versions say command. It says six seventeen. First Timothy, charge them that are rich in this world, that they may be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. You know, riches have a way of making you proud. And wealth has a, a way of, uh, the Bible says that uh, wine is a mocker, but I think wealth is a bigger mocker. It, it's a way of making you have a, a sense of high-mindedness, self, self-importance, self you know, that, 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 you know, looking at, you know, othering others, making, making you uh, have a higher pedestal, mm. supposedly, than the others who are apparently not as wealthy as you are. One thing that uh, wealth does, I'm, I'm, I'm not castigating rich people, I'm not saying that riches is bad. And that, in fact, we have gone through this, a portion in this uh, uh, study that, that says that God really does not uh, uh, hate the act of, you know, working for wealth. Because God actually gives us the ability to become rich. And the desire even. The desire, even the desire. But look at even the, the parable of the, of, the, um, of the talents. The one who was given uh, more and he went and traded. The Bible says he traded. The word is trading. I think, I don't know about your version, but King James says tra he traded, which means he did good business with it. And he, 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 brought, he brought a profit on top of it. And, 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 and he pleased the Lord. He pleased the master. Mm -hmm. The one who was given one and went and buried it under the soil did not please the master. In fact, even the one that he had been given was taken away from it. And so we are, we are saying that the, the Bible really encourages us to invest as much as possible to make profit as much as possible as long as we're not stealing or getting it unfairly or uh, getting it corruptly but over and beyond that after we've gotten this rich sorry sister mercy we should get you some water <laughs> um, over and beyond that um, uh, we need to be careful not to put our trust in this wealth or not to allow this wealth to get us into a point where we are proud, haughty, and we're looking down upon others. I think that's the whole point here. Mm, mm, because mm. there's a way in which you are likely to be high-minded because you see the kind of neighborhood you live in, mm -hmm. the kind of machine you use, mm -hmm. the kind of uh, attire or apparel that you put on. Mm -hmm. But we forget that these things are all temporal. And that is the point I want to leave it. That uh, Proverbs 27, 24, you know, I like it. It says, for riches are not forever. Mm. You know, it's a simple statement. It means riches are fleeting. Riches are not temp are temporal. Riches are not eternal. Mm. So if they are not forever, then what, why is it so important for us to keep this thought constantly in our minds? Pinch yourself awake when you feel like you are drooling and dozing in your riches. Mm -hmm. You need to always constantly remind you, keep a mental note that these things do not last forever. And the best time to use them for the master is now, not in your deathbed. Thank you. If Thank I may. You. Yes, please. If I may interject. Uh, also, keep, keep in mind, uh, if you study the Bible, that even the patriarchs, the father of faith, Abraham was not a poor man. Uh, so riches are not bad. It is, it is people who are bad. It is uh, the ones to whom, uh, in fact, to be rich is a responsibility. Uh, to be rich is like, it, 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 it's, like it, 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 it's, it's like a talent that God has given you. It's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's something that God has, has given you and you're supposed to be responsible in those riches, knowing and um, keeping in mind that you shall give uh, an, an account to God. Going back to um, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, uh, if you continue from verse 18 to 19, he says that, uh, verse 17 as you read, it says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may hold on 
to eternal life. Amen. In fact, uh, I think I don't know whether God, God, God sort of also tries to mock mock riches. Mm. You know, they say diamonds are forever. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we are told uh, in that uh, final flame that cleanses the earth, everything will be burnt up. Burnt. And uh, and when, when John is talking about uh, the New Jerusalem, he says that the streets there are made of gold. Mm. That mud in heaven is precious here on earth. Uh. And uh, people put uh, wear earrings of mud and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and necklaces of mud and things That's like that. True. That that is that is what uh, what people will be stepping on mm. in the new in the in the, in the kingdom to come. And so um, true riches and uh, true grandeur, mm. uh, true interior decoration, <laughs> true true high mm. high end streets to live in mm. are found in the kingdom to come. Amen. And so uh, let us strive and let us not um, let us not fall down. Mm. Uh, over small, small but things Ralph, like on, well. on your wedding day, we will uh, still decorate the place. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. Um, and thank which you. brings uh, us um, just before, but before you come in, Elder. Yes. Because uh, I think I think we, we 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 do need to move to the legacy, the, the spiritual legacy, and picking up. And I wanted to pick up that Elder, picking up from what Ralph has said in terms of these things. You know, let's not take it too seriously. You know, let's not wait until, you know, because some people actually I think it's a fallacy of the devil. It's a deception of the devil that, you know, to think that I'll give it, I'll give it, until a point where it really is left to others to distribute. Mm -hmm. And we were told by the lesson writer to actually be our own executors of our own will and, and do what you would want with, with your resources. Ensure you've sorted out your children and your family, but also the work of God. Mm. Elder, we're talking about the spiritual legacy leaving a legacy in your name, what will be Elder Manyara remembered for when all is said and done? We will remember you for your wealth, your positions. What will we remember you for? It is something mm. I'm praying about. Amen. Amen. <laughs> mm. I don't know what it will be, but I'm just praying about it. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we have looked at Wednesday about deathbed charity. 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 There's something that shocked me. We may have good wishes, we may give that when we die. Yeah. But sometimes it may be lost before yeah. it goes to the Lord's what? Work. Treasury. Mm. So it is a challenge to me that if there is that which I desire to give to the Lord, yeah. I give it, it enters the treasury before it is lost. Amen. In fact, Ellen White talks about banks, uh, banks failing. Mm. We have seen banks collapsing, mm -hmm. institutions collapsing, and property being what? Lost. Mm. Probably the ones we were intending to give to who? Mm. To God. Mm. So it is very advantageous to give that now, mm. to leave our spiritual legacy. Mm. Actually, um, concepts on stewardship page 342. Yeah. Uh, in giving to the work of God, you are laying up. For yourselves, treasures in heaven. Mm. All that you lay up above is a cure from disaster and loss. Yeah. And is increasing to an eternal and enduring substance. Mm -hmm. And will be registered to your account in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And these are the advantages that we get by giving now and not later. Number one. Mm -hmm. They don't actually can see the results of the gift. Yeah. Can you imagine when you see the results mm -hmm. of what you did? Mm. Number two, the ministry or person can benefit now when the need is greatest. Amen. Yeah, uh, You don't have to do something for someone when they cannot benefit from it. Mm. Like now, see, when people are sick, we don't fundraise a lot. Mm. But when they die... Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yes. They, they, they are not there to see it. Mm. The greatest, the best time to give is when they have that need at that yeah, moment. The church has a need now. Yeah. Give it now. Amen. Number three, there is no fighting among family mm. or friends after your death. Yeah. If you give it, they know this one was given to. Mm -hmm. th this piece of land was dedicated to build a church. Mm. So it is left. Yeah. Nobody is fighting over it. Sure. Number five, Number four, it sets a good example to family values of generosity. Yeah. You can imagine when as a family, you, you give something. It sets a very good example mm. of what you have done and others will follow it. Number five, it minimizes 
estate tax consequence. Can you imagine? <clears throat> it has a, a bigger benefit than when you die. <laughs> yeah, number six, it guarantees that the gift will be made to your desired entity. Mm. Nobody will change it for something else. Mm -hmm. Uh, number seven, it demonstrates that the heart of the donor has changed mm. from selfish to unselfish. Mm. Yeah, we are naturally selfish. Mm. But when we give mm. while we are alive, mm -hmm. we show a changed heart. And then finally, it stores up treasures in heaven. Mm. You can imagine the congratulations mm -hmm. that we will be given when we get to heaven. Mm. Remember those two words faithful servant yeah. it's amazing amen. thank you amen you know I, I, I was i was i came to the realization that storing up our treasures in heaven is the souls that will be in heaven as a consequences of your giving or your work mm -hmm. so you know when we're told there will be no starless star in heaven so we really ought to be asking ourselves right now where is our where are our this we are stewards eh? where is our stewardship where are we storing up our stewardship? Do you know what I mean? The products of our stewardship. Mm -hmm. And I pray to God that it will be mentioned of us because of souls that will come, you know. And you won't remember that, Morris, one day you gave, you know, some maybe 500 and it really meant nothing much to you at that point in time. But when you see a child in heaven who made it because of that 500 you gave for a children ministry, you know, uh, evangelism, work, or something, you, you know, uh, <clears throat> when you went out to chaplaincy and it was a sacrifice, to go out to my Mahio, my Mahio is not near for your fuel, yeah. but you did it. The Lord remembers. And, and, and so, you know, we, we bury ourselves alive, you know, when they say Ali Jizika, you know, like, you know, really, your story, your legacy, your spiritual legacy. And I, so I pray that the Lord would, would, may it be said of us that we left a spiritual legacy for our children, for those who come behind us that they would really find footsteps to know there was one who lived in your name. I don't know. I want you, Maurice, to look at our conclusion on Friday. And I can see, Mrs. White, there, there are amazing quotations in terms of, 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 of um, how to be our own executors. I don't know. Just take us through uh, your thoughts on that conclusion. All right. Uh, thank you. In question, um, I think we need to just keep this question in mind. Yeah. Though we can lay up treasures in heaven now, why is it is it that not the same? Why is that not the same thing as trying to earn or even buy mm. your way to salvation? Yeah. I think that needs to be very clear yeah. that we are not uh, being saved by works. That's no true. amount of giving or wealth or charity or uh, generosity, mm -hmm. um, you know, no amount of laying up treasures mm -hmm. can save us if we don't. Um, you know, apart from, if you separate that, you know, from the fact that we are saved by grace. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, mm -hmm. not by works, lest anyone should boast. Mm -hmm. But we also are told that uh, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. All right? So faith and works go together. Mm -hmm. And they are two sides of the same coin, which is called our salvation. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a caution that we need to say at the tail end of this discussion. I like the fact that it's coming right now yes. when we are done with the discussion, that even though we are called to give and with all the benefits of giving, with all, with all the, you know, the, the, the importance of giving while we are alive and while we can see what our giving is doing, we need to just always keep a mental note that it is not the only factor mm. for our salvation. Amen. Yeah. So we should not do it with um, mm -hmm. with the expectation, mm -hmm. you know, with saying that, you know, I'm giving it so that I'll get it mm -hmm. back. You know, I'm paying it forward, like some people say. Yes, there is an aspect of paying forward, but that should not be the only motivation for our giving. Mm. Um, uh, I'd like us to just go through testimonies for the church, volume 4, page 476, the first quote. Um, Ellen White wrote two chapters in this important topic of distribution of our asset. Um, to the aged uh, and wealthy parents, that is in testimonies, Volume 3, page 116, and the wills and legacies, that is in testimonies, Volume 4, 
476. I think that's for our further reading. But I, I, the summary of all these three paragraphs that follow is what we have said. Yes. That um, the giving will not replace our the fact that we are saved by grace. Amen. No amount of works here on earth in this flesh mm. can save us. But Jesus Christ who died for us and believing in him mm. and believing in his matchless grace. Amen. Yeah, thank Amen. you. Very powerful. I'll give you some few, uh, time to think about your closing remarks. For the Christian, the second coming of Christ is a blessed hope. We all have imagined what an aws how awesome it would be to see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. We are eager to hear the words, well done. But what if we should be laid up in our rest before Jesus returns? If we have to follow his revealed will, we can have the satisfaction now of seeing the works go forward because of our efforts, knowing that because of our estate plan, the work will continue after we are gone. And I, th I, th I thank God, you know, for what you have said, Maurice. And so in terms of we're told, let's plan. Let's plan because oh, oh, for, for, our, for our ending times. Let's, uh, let's plan for our last days. Let's think about how we would want to distribute our resources so that for the sake of our families, but also for the sake of wa the work of God, such that it can be said even after you were gone. Like you were giving an example of someone who gives their land for, the work of, for, for a church. You know you'll be gone, but really there will be many who will worship there and many souls will be saved for the kingdom of God. Your final remarks, Elder. Uh, <clears throat> it's amazing mm. that we have gone through this lesson. Mm. It has so many, so, so, so many things to teach us. Yeah. That <clears throat> we have to remember the source of wealth. Amen. And we are implored upon to give back mm. to the source. Amen. And that will be the greatest blessing that we will get. Amen. And remember, God does not take money to heaven. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is used to advance his, his cause. Okay. You pointed it out very well. Mm. That the souls that will be in heaven. Mm. And you can imagine. Mm. The, do, the, the, the two words you have also read. Mm. Well done. Amen. It is something that I'm longing for. Mm. And it's to, to be told to me. Well and to all of us who are seated here and to all of us who are watching. Thank Amen. you very much. Ralph. Uh, uh, a song comes to mind. It's called What If I Give All. Mm. It, it, it uh, paints a picture of a boy. Uh, maybe perhaps I will read it for you. Um, it's written by a gentleman called Ray Bolts. Mm. It, says, um, it, says, it says a story of a little boy. It says, he had the preacher say a single dime can feed a hungry boy or girl but nothing to eat. So he pulled a dollar from the pocket of his jeans and he asked his mama how many will this feed yeah. she just smiled and told him 10 then the boy he reached back in again what if i give all mm. what if i what will that gift do mm. my child a gift like that could change the world mm. it could feed a multitude mm. he didn't close his eyes or turn away i can see him standing tall he saw the need and i can hear him say what if i give all mm. cotizan says three birthday dollars could have brought a special toy but it reminds me of another little boy who gave Jesus a gift of fish and bread. Mm. I wonder if he said, what if I give all? Mm. What will that gift do? My child, a gift like that could change the world. Mm. It could feed a multitude. The story of that boy, we don't know his name. Yeah. But it has been preached for thousands of years, mm. long after his death. Mm. Because he gave the little that he, he could. Mm. And in fact, the title of our lesson isn't giving to God, but rather giving back. Yeah. We see the difference in our theology isn't that we are, we are not planting a seed. Yeah. We have been blessed. Amen. Therefore, we are giving. Amen. We are not giving in order for us to be blessed. God has blessed us. Mm -hmm. God has already blessed us. And mm -hmm. so we are simply called to do what? To give back. We are simply called to give back. And eventually, uh, the songwriter says, he speaks about a father and a son. Mm -hmm. And Sister White writes in the book Desire of Ages, in giving Christ to man, to the world, to die for us, God gave the the greatest gift mm. that heaven could afford Amen. for salvation. Amen. And so, likewise, uh, you and I shouldn't, have, shouldn't find it difficult. Okay. Let's ask God to give us a spirit uh, of humility, a spirit of wisdom, mm -hmm. a spirit of, indus of industry, and a spirit that uh, will enable us to be faithful and to, above all else, to give back and to invest, as you say, uh, to the stars in our crowns, Amen. the salvation of our fellow men and women.
Amen. Maurice. Take my life and let it be consecrated mm. all for thee. Um, and that, that song is a beautiful one. It, it, if you go to the other stanzas, it says, take my heart, take my hands, mm. take my feet, take my lips, take my will. Mm. Oh, Lord, I give, you know. Mm. At thy feet, it's treasure store. Take thy will, my will and make it thine. That is the part I want us to get to. You know, if your will is not God's, mm. or if your will and God's will has not been aligned, mm. then all this is mirage. Mm. All this is... Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, almost kupigia uh, ambuzi gita, mm. <laughs> for lack of a better phrase. Mm. If we want to give to glorify God, mm. I dare say we need to first align our will with God's will. Um, this, this reason, the reason why people people give to be seen, people mm. stand on pulpits and give, give large donations. These mm. days, our pulpits are on WhatsApp, yeah. and 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 there are lots of WhatsApp groups, and there are long lists of people, people calling themselves huge titles and names, and you see huge sums of money attached mm. to their names, and 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 they cannot give until so and so and has given, and you ask how much had so and so given, mm. I will double that. Mm. If so and so has given a hundred k, I will do 200 you know so that i save my name and my position in this church or in this society mm -hmm. that kind of giving is not according to god's will god has not has not taken our will we have not voluntarily given our will to god like the songwriter says take my will and make it thine mm -hmm. the moment our will and the will of god is aligned then our giving will surely be aligned to the will of god yeah amen if i could uh, add <laughs> more springs i thought the story of the widow mm. who put in two mites. Mm. Uh, so uh, also let's not, uh, in giving back, let's not fall into the trap of comparing because mm. yes. God has blessed us differently. And in giving back, it's not necessarily only materially, as you said, but you could also give back of your time. Mm. If you have the opportunity, as you said, to go to my Mayu, you know, you so maybe some fuel there, but also you, you have the opportunity to go to those girls who... Most of the fact that most of that congregation is not Adventist, mm. but they they join up in the church, and it's a great evangelistic work that you are taking part, and uh, and your works will follow you. Amen. Your works will follow you. There's a blessing. So let's not uh, compare and and and, and struggle mm. that I want to give like so and so. Mm. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Very true. My closing remarks. Revelation 14 verse 13. The Bible says, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labor and their works shall follow them. I don't know what will be said of us when we have rested. Will we have slept in the Lord? Let's start there. And will our works follow us? We've been told today we do not know our day. Today we are here. Tomorrow we may not be here. I pray that it will be said of us that our works followed us, that we had given of ourselves and of our time and of our resources such that the work of God may continue. May your works follow you. May my works follow me and my brothers here. In Jesus' name, let Amen. us pray. Amen. Loving Father, thank you. This lesson, powerful lesson, mighty God, please help us. Help us, Lord, for there is so much that we need to learn of you to give back. Thank you for everything you've given unto us. You have taught us a lot this morning. Bless your people wherever they are. There was someone who this word needed to be said. May you remember them. Remember us, O oh God, and watch over us this Sabbath day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.